All right, welcome to the beginning of the sequence of lectures on the tricarboxylic acid cycle or TCA cycle. So, this has a variety of other names. Sometimes it's called the citric acid cycle, sometimes it's called the Krebs cycle. Um, and really what we'll see is uh, it can name the citric acid cycle because we'll see that citrate has three carboxylic acid groups. So um, that's the source of tricarboxylic acid or TCA. And beyond the semantics of its various names, what does TCA do? Well, the TCA cycle is a really important cycle that is at the center of primary metabolism and uh, firstly we can see that from glycolysis equivalents of glucose can be converted to pyruvate this is going to give us both equivalents of ATP and equivalents of NADH through glycolysis, which we just looked at. And then following the formation of pyruvate, pyruvate can be rapidly converted to acetyl-CoA. And this is one of the many different ways acetyl-CoA can be produced. And we'll see that that will also produce, if I can erase up, oh. Let's say get apologies. My hands just keep touching buttons and opening uh, advertisements, apparently. So acetyl-CoA can come from a variety of sources, but in the context of this chapter, primarily we're going to focus on the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and this is also going to give us an equivalent of NADH. And then once we have acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA will feed into the TCA cycle, or citric acid cycle. And I'm just going to draw this. like this. Uh, we'll get into the details of the cycle shortly, but there's going to be a few points at which NADH will come out of the TCA cycle. Here and here we'll get an equivalent of GTP, which is an ATP analog. We converted to that, and we'll also have two equivalents of, well not two equivalents, an FADH two and another NADH. So we'll have a number of new reducing equivalents coming out of TCA as well as a reducing equivalent coming out of the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA and all these equivalents of NADH and FADH2 will feed into the processes of electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. And these processes are going to yield large quantities of ATP. But we're going to focus on these downstream processes in following chapters. Uh, but just to give everyone a sense of where this is going, I think this was an important little introduction. Now, let's jump in to this first part, pyruvate and TCA. Okay, so TCA starts off with pyruvate. Now some texts will say that it starts off with acetyl-CoA, but because we left off with the formation of pyruvate from glycolysis, I feel that this is an appropriate place to pick it up. So in the context of this class, let's just say that TCA cycle begins with pyruvate. And pyruvate, if you recall, has the following structure. And pyruvate can be converted to acetyl-CoA via pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. Uh, 
And in addition to the enzyme, we're going to need a cofactor. We're going to need an equivalent of coenzyme A, sulfohydro. And it's going to give off an equivalent of CO2. And we're also going to need an input of NAD plus because we're going to yield a reducing equivalent of NADH plus a proton from this process. So what does acetyl-CoA look like? What we've done here is replaced the carboxylate with coenzyme A. And this keeps this position this carbonyl activated, but also accounts for the loss of CO2, which really helps drive the process. And we'll get into this uh, in substantially more detail in, uh, once we've gone through the whole cycle. And this is acetyl-CoA. So it's really just coenzyme A, which has been acetylated functionally. Let me scroll up a little bit here, make a little bit of room. And then from here, acetyl-CoA is going to bind with an equivalent of oxaloacetate via citrate synthase enzyme, producing an equivalent of citrate. And that looks like this. So oxaloacetate has the following structure. And for ease of drawing, I'm going to move from the convention of drawing all of the double bonds in the charge and just making a carboxylate COO minus, like right in here. Um, they'll make drawing the rest of the cycle a lot less laborious and easier to read for everybody. So this is oxaloacetate. And we need to bring the water to this party. We have the enzyme, it's citrate synthase. And we're going to produce citrate. And that is going to add all of the carbons that we see from the acetyl group to the oxaloacetate. So what that's going to look like is this. Now we're going to have three carbons in the backbone chain, and all three of these carbons will have a carboxylate, hence tricarboxylic acid cycle. And this is our citrate. Now you may be wondering, what on earth happened to that coenzyme A? Well, this coenzyme A will leave the system. Sorry, that A is not the best. And be reused in the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So now that we have our citrate, citrate gets converted to isocitrate via aconitase enzyme. And it's named isocitrate because all we're doing is moving the hydroxyl group from the central carbon to one carbon down. And this is our isocitrate. Now once we've moved this hydroxyl group forming isocitrate, we can see 
the action of isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme, which will cause a decarboxylation and the formation of an equivalent of NADH by forming alpha ketoglutarate. So what's that look like? Well, we're going to have isocitrate dehydrogenase. And we're going to see a decarboxylation forming equivalent of CO2 and the formation of NADH plus a proton to form alpha ketoglutarate. Make a little bit more room here. Notice where we are losing the equivalent of CO2 from the central carbon, which is facilitated by moving the hydroxyl group off of that, leading to having two delocalizing or electron withdrawing groups making this carbon uh, particularly easy to decarboxylate. Also note that the hydroxyl group has been oxidized to a double bond in the formation of alpha ketoglutarate. Make a little bit of room here. And now that we've got our alpha ketoglutarate, we're going to see the action of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase enzyme, which is going to have yet another decarboxylation and the formation of another equivalent of NADH, and this is going to form the new compound succinyl-CoA. So, let me make a little bit more room here. See that decarboxylation, the formation of another equivalent of NADH plus H plus from NAD plus, and succinyl CoA looks like this. Note that the status of the oxidation on this bottom carbon has not changed, it is still doubly bound, but now we've replaced that equivalent of CO2 that we see here, let me grab a different color for clarity's sake, that we saw here with another equivalent of coenzyme A. So. Moving back to black, this is succinyl-CoA. And this stays nicely activated through the presence of the coenzyme A. But what we're going to do next is take succinyl-CoA and we're going to remove the coenzyme A and make succinate. And this is going to involve the loss of the coenzyme A, and we're going to form, instead of a reducing equivalent, an equivalent of GTP, which is a uh, nucleoside that's similar to ATP. And in fact, GTP is used to rapidly convert ADP to ATP in a subsequent step. So just for keeping track of what's going on, our coenzyme A 
falls off and then gets added back on in the following step with this decarboxylation of alpha ketoglutarate. So what's succinate look like? Well, actually, let's keep track of all of our things here. We need our addition of a phosphate. And we have GDP, our diphosphate, GTP, our triphosphate, and an ADP and an ATP. which can give us ATP as an output uh, for this step. And this enzyme, which is executing this process, is succinyl-CoA synthetase. I'm going to rewrite succinate here because I didn't give myself quite enough room. So let's draw the structure first. And at this point, you may notice, oh my goodness, through these pair of decarboxylations that we just went through, forming alpha ketoglutarate, then succinyl-CoA, we went from having this three carbon backbone as drawn with citrate, with each of these carbons having a carboxylic acid attached to them, and now we're back to having a two carbon backbone in succinate which has a carboxylic acid on each component. So we added a pair of carbons by acetylating oxaloacetate in the beginning, forming citrate, and then we went through a pair of decarboxylations, removing those two carbons that we added through energy retrieving events or energy capturing events through the formation of NADH in both of those cases with the decarboxylation and now the formation of a GTP and subsequently ATP. But we're not done yet because we there's still more energy we can retrieve from this process. So from succinate, we're going to see succinate acted on by succinate dehydrogenase forming fumarate. And fumarate is going to have uh, be drawn a little bit differently because we want to show the trans configuration with the carboxylates situated opposite one another. And this process, you'll notice involves the formation of a double bond across the two main carbons. And this process yields an equivalent of FADH2 from FAD, which is a lower energy reducing equivalent analogous to NADH. And when I say lower energy, there isn't quite as much energy associated with this transformation as there is with the decarboxylations that preceded it earlier in the cycle. However, there's still energy to be captured. So to capture this lower amount of energy transition, we need a unique reducing equivalent which can take advantage of this lower energy process. And in this particular case, it's FADH2. And FADH2 is going to feed into oxidative phosphorylation and electron transport just like NADH does, but through a slightly separate route, which we'll get into in the following chapter. And now that we have fumarate, we're going to add water across our double bond using fumarase enzyme. So water's going to come in. I 
Oh, I misspelled fumarate. I put a U in there. Let me get that corrected. Fumarate. There we go. Fumarays. Not with a U. And this is going to give one of my favorite compounds in the cycle, malate. By adding water across the double bond, we're going to get the following structure. And malate is actually named for um, tart green apples, which was originally found uh, based on the Latin name for apple. And that super tart flavor you experience with a green apple or any number of other very tart uh, candies or fruits is malic acid or malate. And malate's a very interesting compound. It actually potentiates your taste buds to experience uh, other flavors differently. And as well as that, uh, down the road, I'll probably talk a little bit about my own personal research, which involves the role malate has in neuroprotection as well as um, enhancing ATP production in neurons. So we'll get there a little bit later as part of the segue. Now from malate, we can regenerate oxaloacetate using malate dehydrogenase. And this also yields an equivalent of an NADH. From NAD+. And then we're back to the beginning. We've taken this hydroxyl and we've oxidized it. And that oxidation has returned us to oxaloacetate. And with that oxaloacetate, we are now ready to grab another equivalent of acetyl-CoA and put this acetyl group back on, on the carbon. So that is, let me zoom back out. An overview of the TCA cycle. Um, once again, we're going to start with pyruvate. Pyruvate will go to acetyl-CoA, which will combine with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Citrate will be slightly modified, moving the hydroxyl group to form isocitrate. Isocitrate will then undergo a decarboxylation, forming alpha-ketoglutarate and a reducing equivalent of NADH. Alpha-ketoglutarate will go through a subsequent decarboxylation, forming equivalent of NADH and succinyl-CoA. Succinyl-CoA will then lose its equivalent of coenzyme A, producing an equivalent of ATP and yielding succinate. Succinate will then get a double bond formed between its two central carbons, which will allow the addition of water to produce malate, and then malate will be oxidized back to oxaloacetate and the process begins all over again. So this is our basic overview of the citric acid or TCA cycle. Um, let me pause here and we'll spend a little time diving into the first steps of the TCA cycle. Actually, I think I'll post this as the initial video and then we'll... Um, We'll pick up the separate steps as separate videos. I think that'll be a good plan. Then we'll probably have two more mini lectures to cover the rest of the content.